Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're taking a look inside the computer case, and specifically in this episode, we're taking a look at the motherboard. Now, the motherboard is the bedrock of any computer system. Everything connects to it or is attached directly to it. So the first thing you want to do if you're doing any maintenance inside your computer system, you want to switch any parts or anything else, is you need to understand what your motherboard is, so you understand what the functionality is and the capabilities of it are. Now, to identify the motherboard, first of all, if you have a system from a company like Dell or HP, it's to identify the model of your computer. And generally, that will tell you everything you need to know. You can go to the website for your computer manufacturer and look up the specs for the motherboard there. If you have one that was custom built, either um, by a friend or by a local system builder, a, a local computer shop that puts things together using parts, then what you want to do is you want to take a closer look at the motherboard itself. Now every motherboard typically has stenciled to it somewhere the name of the manufacturer and the name of the model. In this case we've got an ASUS and then the model number is listed right beside that. Now that'll be somewhere on the motherboard, not necessarily in the positions that we have here, but it will be located around the motherboard somewhere. So train an eye on there carefully. Now one thing you want to be absolutely clear about when you're going in on the motherboard and you're starting to play around with it is that you ground yourself somehow. Going inside any computer case it's very important not to put static electricity onto the components because they're very sensitive. So touch the edge of the computer case before you go into it or use a grounded wrist strap that uh, will take any static electricity away from your body and away from the sensitive components inside. And the main thing that you'll see inside uh, attached to the motherboard is the CPU, the central processing unit, and that's generally located behind this big fan here. That is what does all of the processing, all the number crunching when you're on, online doing email, playing a game. That's the main thing that's running inside the, the system making the computer run. The fan is generally attached to the motherboard. You can take it off and look around. Be careful when you're doing this because often there's some thermal paste attached between the processor and the fan. If you just yank on the fan, that's actually pretty damaging. The processor can be replaced on a lot of these systems. In some cases, the processor is wired right to the motherboard in the case of uh, big manufacturers that do all this all in bulk. But for the most part, the processor is pretty modular. You can actually take the fan off, take the processor out, replace it with a newer processor, and then put the fan back on. Now, this is uh, something that you want to be very careful about and why you want to identify the motherboard because the motherboard will typically take CPUs up to a certain speed. So you want to be sure that you match the, uh, the specs of the motherboard with the processor that you're planning to do. Sometimes you may already have the fastest processor that will go on that particular board. Now located near the processor, you'll typically find one of the components of the chipset. The chipsets are what allows all of the parts inside the computer to talk to each other. You can't really replace them, they're just an integral part of the motherboard, but it's important to know what they are and that they're there. On the back of this system, uh, you'll see 
a bunch of connectors. These are attached directly to the motherboard. This will be on older systems, things that would attach your keyboard and your mouse using the old PS2 style connectors. Most newer machines have nothing but USB. You'll see uh, Ethernet ports on there if you have them, parallel ports for old printers potentially, although those are tending to disappear these days. And you'll also see in a growing number of cases for lower end systems anyways, you will see the sound connectors on there and a lot of times you'll also see the video connectors on there. So connecting your monitor directly to the motherboard. Another key component of the motherboard is the RAM. The RAM is often located near the processor and the chipset as well. And the RAM comes in groups of one stick to four sticks typically. Uh, often they come in dual channel and uh, we'll talk about that more in an upcoming episode. Motherboard also typically has a number of slots down the one side. That is to accommodate any expansion cards. Um, including video cards, USB adapter cards, modems, uh, anything that you may want to add into the system that isn't either built into the motherboard or connected to it in another way. Those come down the side. There's a few different types of slots, including PCI Express, PCI. Older machines may have ISA slots and AGP slots for video cards. The other crucial components that you connect to the motherboard are the hard drive and the CD or DVD drive. And these are connected to the motherboard in one of two ways, depending on how old the components are typically. If you have an older machine, generally you'll use an IDE cable, which is the wider ribbon-like cable you'll see at the bottom. If you have a newer system, you'll use something called SATA or Serial ATA, which is an L-shaped connector that uses a thinner, more compact cable. Generally, these are down at the bottom end of the motherboard, and you'll have them in clusters typically. Now, the IDE cables are tending to go away these days on newer machines as SATA becomes the default connector for these types of drives. But on older machines, you may actually still see the IDE cables all by itself or beside the serial ATA connectors. Last but not least, you need to get power to the motherboard to make it all work, and that is connected directly to the power supply using a long series of cables. It uh, is attached depending on the motherboard in one place, two places, and sometimes even three places to get different types of power to different parts of the motherboard. So that's an overview of the motherboard inside the computer system. 